Do you smell that? I think it's the winds of change. Can you believe it? A new year is almost upon us, and this is going to be the last haunted hippie video of 2023. The last video. The last melon. Ice Age reference. Of course, you already know why I've gathered you all here today. We have talked about 2022 horror quite a lot, especially in recent weeks. However, I have not heard a whole lot of unpopular horror opinions. Granted, whenever I love a movie, there are plenty of people who hate it. Whenever Whenever I hate a movie, there are plenty of people who love it. However, I think that things will get far more interesting today. I made a community tab post over on my channel asking for your most unpopular opinions from horror this year, and I hope that you guys didn't disappoint. I say hope because I am reacting to these brand new. I have not looked at a single comment under this community tab post, so hopefully we're all in for a treat. I say we get started. Oh, but before that, actually, look, I didn't want to make a big deal out of it or anything, but I noticed that some some of you guys have not signed the blood pact yet. That's the only way to join our cult. You scared of needles? Well, you know, that's just too bad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> By the blood pact, I do mean though that I hope that you're subscribed, that you like the video, that at some point you leave a comment, and click the notification bell. Stick around for more deranged horror content. Because if you're a fan of weird goth girls telling you to give them your blood, then this is the right place for you. Anyway, let's get on to these weird and wacky opinions. Oh, the very first one that came up is from my friend Tia from Royal Horror. Sam is an absolute badass final girl. The final act makes her a strong character and lead overall. She deserves less hate. She with Sydney are the only ones that have faced Ghostface savagely. Long live Sam. Now this is a bit of an unpopular opinion because if you don't know, there are some truly god-awful people in the Scream fandom. They're just hell-bent in their belief that Nev Campbell should forever be the solo star of this franchise. They don't seem to pay much mind to Courtney Cox and they hate on the newer girlies. And when it was officially announced that Nev Campbell was not returning to the franchise, Melissa Barrera was sent a ton of hate. There was also like some racism happening with that whole situation. So that was really uncomfortable for everybody. I don't fully agree with this because I don't feel like Sam is a super strong character. I am hoping that she gets fleshed out quite a bit more in Scream 6 and I have hope for her. I like her, I don't dislike her. But I agree with Tiago because the hate she receives is fully unearned and those people, frankly, I mean, especially when it's rooted in racism, like just shut the fuck up. Let people enjoy things, jeez. Oh gosh, the very next one is from T. Parker Evans, a regular on the live streams. Shout out, his is about Halloween ends, I knew that there would be a bunch of people in the chat saying Halloween ends is great. So I don't know if that's actually like an unpopular opinion, though I do feel like way more people disliked Halloween ends than Halloween kills. So it is a bit more unpopular. This also got 13 replies. So let's get into the tea. Halloween ends is a good Halloween film exploring the season, the concept of how evil works and affects people it comes across. But as a conclusion to a trilogy, I understand why it didn't work for a lot of people. Okay, so you already knew what my pushback was gonna be. Well, people are getting a little bit uh, spicy getting a little bit too real in the in the replies to this one. I will flash this one up here. I'm not trying to get anybody to dislike Halloween, but I feel like this does kind of disprove some, some of the points that Halloween Ends lovers bring up. They basically just bring up one of the main reasons why I disliked Halloween Ends. Everything happens on circumstance. Like, it's nuts. Corey gets called last second to be a babysitter. Corey says he's gonna kill the kid as the parents walk in. Lori gives Allison her dead parents' wedding ring four years later and happens to be the week this all happens, yada yada, like you get what it's saying. <laughs> Another person saying, even though it has its flaws, I enjoyed Halloween Ends, I like what they had going on with Corey. Halloween Ends is underrated, even though some choices for the film weren't the best choices, it's overall not bad. I like that they tried to explore a different genre for the Halloween franchise. Uh... You know, you know. And see, these comments also get a fair amount of likes, so I promise you, you're not alone. <laughs> well, my unpopular opinion is that Dash Cam is officially my new all-time favorite horror movie. That leads me to some follow-up questions. Why? That's the main th why. <laughs> Someone else said, oh wow, I'd love to hear why that is. Yeah, me too, and it, this is important. Cause if you love it for the main character, that's a little bit sus, a little bit sussy of you. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that's not why, but to have that be your favorite new horror movie of all time, that's wild, man. 
Uh, uh, why does this keep getting on my teeth? What one man may find insufferable may be another man's greatest treasure. That is the beauty of the horror world. <laughs> Terrifier 2 was an amazing breath of fresh air, and Art the Clown will go down as a horror icon. You know, that's just not an unpopular opinion. <laughs> another one I wanted to throw out there is that after seeing the new Hellraiser film, I personally loved it. The acting and the story are great, and the cinematography is stunning. It doesn't top the original first two for me by any means, but it is far superior sequel to the other eight movies we did get. In my my head canon as of now, Hellraiser is a trilogy and this caps it off. I hope no one brings the pitchforks on this one. <laughs> no, plenty of people actually like that movie. I would go so far as to say that's not an unpopular opinion, but I think I just happened to really not like the new one. And I'm sure to my subscribers, I am somewhat of a loud voice in this community. I have very strong opinions, <laughs> but a lot of people did like that one. Smile has one of the greatest jump scares in recent memory. I'm usually not reactive to jump scares, but that one scared the shit out of me. And I think I know exactly which one you're talking about. Is it the one where she's in the car? Let me know. Someone also wanted to know, but they put a spoiler warning, which I should do as well. If that was the one you're talking about, then put a spoiler warning on your comment. Okay, this person understood the assignment. <laughs> Halloween Ends is one of the best of the year, actually. Maybe even one of the best Halloween movies. Only gripe is that Laurie and Michael deserve more screen time in terms of their fight. If this wasn't the concluding trilogy, I bet people would like it a lot more. Yeah, that's completely valid. If Halloween Ends was its own, like, branched off kind of a thing, then I would have probably really liked it, actually. Also, Halloween Ends is a great conclusion to Laurie Strode's character arc. Mm, uh, uh, is it? Because we go from the original to 40 years later and she is Sarah Connor up in this piece, okay? She is locked and loaded. Her whole house is a booby trap. And then four years later, it's like, yeah, my daughter was brutally murdered along with like half the town, but I'm making pies. I'm living my life. Hey, we needed just a, a little more of that filled in. I'm sorry, but no. Desi, 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 here we go. Halloween Ends isn't a bad movie, it's a bad end to a trilogy. Yeah, so th th this is kind of saying all the stuff that I've been saying, really that everyone's been saying. Like, I feel like this one also suffered because our fan theories were better than the execution of all three movies. This is true. Too much time went by where we were allowed to create our own world of Haddonfield based on what we needed to see on screen and what we wanted could have been done well in two movies. David Gordon Green did what he did to make more money, not for the love of these characters or the lore of Haddonfield. That's kind of a hot take, but also kind of not a hot take because in all the promotion and stuff and the behind the scenes and all the stuff that I learned in interviews and whatnot, David Gordon Green and Danny McBride were huge fans of the franchise. However, when the third movie of the trilogy flops that badly and really kind of disregards all the stuff that you've built up, it doesn't really feel like that was in your plans. It really feels like those other two movies were tacked on, which they were because they only pitched like two movies initially. I talked about this, I think in my Halloween Ends review or my comparison to Halloween H2O, but they originally pitched two movies and then only one was greenlit. And once they saw that success, they greenlit two more movies. So really they kind of beefed it. And to me, it does not feel like it was done with love. Moving on to her next unpopular opinion, that the black phone was overhyped and the character of the grabber was wasted because Ethan Hawke makes a fantastic villain. Overall, it was a good movie, but I wanted more. They could have absolutely gone more Silence of the Lambs with this. And I'd love to have an origin story. Me too. I think Ethan Hawke was so fantastic in that role, but I don't feel like they dug deep enough with it. Not to mention, I do feel like our protagonists had it really, really easy. Like, oh great, she has visions and he is getting help from all the previous victim's ghosts. They, like everything was handed to these kids. I don't get like, what is so strong about this story? <laughs> it's still really entertaining though. I found it really entertaining, but I didn't even put it on my honorable mentions for best of the year. It was in my like above average kind of category in my ranking. Scream 5, I think she means was a solid entry. And as much as I love Nev Campbell, her involvement wasn't necessary here. You could have made this movie with Dewey and Gale and still felt the impact of Dewey's death without her return. Although I did enjoy the Thelma and Louise friendship vibe we got from Gale and Sydney. Yeah, no, I love the fact that Nev came back for a fifth time, but I think the torch was really well passed. I do kind of feel like she was necessary in Scream 5 because the whole motive was about like creating stakes in this new installment, needing to bring the legacy characters back to like kill them once and for all. And yes, Gale and Sydney are fantastic together. I love to see their arc throughout the franchise and where they're at now. Anyway, moving 
on, Smile was the most unsettling movie of the year. While not on the same level of greatness, it carried the heaviness of Hereditary and not enough people are discussing Sosie Bacon's performance. I think her performance was really good and it definitely was heavy, but also I'm just starting to get a little bit tired of it, of the whole traumatized woman trope. So it didn't really do that much for me, although Smile was probably one of the scariest movies of the year for me personally, just because I don't deal with the anticipation of jump scares well. That really gets to me, that gets my anxiety going. But it was fine. I gave it three out of five stars, you know? It was decent. It, it was a welcome new movie. And her final unpopular opinion, Chucky's second season was the most disappointing horror entry of the year. Fiona Dorf was wasted through most of it, and while I adore and love Jennifer Tilly, having her carry the show on her back wasn't the smartest decision. You have gold in the way Fiona Dorf can embody the mannerisms of her father. Her performances alone were my favorite part of the first season. She should have been your front runner, even if Jennifer is the bigger name. Um, I think that some factual information was spit here. The second season of Chucky was probably my second or third biggest disappointment of the entire year. The first one definitely being Halloween Ends because I loved the other installments of the new trilogy so much. I was so looking forward to it. And then Nope was a really big sloppy messy disappointment for me. And then Chucky season two, I don't know if that or Nope was a bigger disappointment, but certainly it's cracking the top three. So I agree with this. I've mostly seen love for the second season. I struggle to understand that, but I'ma let you enjoy it. Oh, we have another one about Chucky right here. Okay, here we go. The murder mystery episode of Chucky was a fun experimental episode that worked for me. I like how season two of Chucky did its own thing. It wasn't a rehash of season one. I want to say that that's a good thing, but when you're continuing a narrative of the first season, like th there should probably be a little bit more continuity there. Like it's good for each season to kind of be its own thing, you know, bring in a new location, new characters, new themes, what have you. But I needed more continuity. I needed better writing. I needed all of the struggles in the plot to not be dropped within one episode. Also this murder mystery episode that worked for Anthony was probably my least favorite of the entire season. So different strokes, you know, would you look at that? This next part of the comment is really interesting though. And I think this is also good context for the new Hellraiser movie. It was more of a mashup of the Books of Blood and the Damnation game than a true Hellraiser film. It was held together by strong Hellraiser and Hellbound Heart elements, mainly the Cenobites and a few other deep cut details, but it felt much more like a mainstreaming of Clive Barker's greatest hits than a typical Hellraiser film. And that's why I love it so much. Also, the human villain is just a reskinned version of Joseph Whitehead from the Damnation game, a character who made a pact with hellish monsters only to try and keep him at bay by hiding in his fortress. He was the main villain of that book. <laughs> you can show my name on screen. I can take it, Kylie. I do not wish to roast any of you, but but maybe some of your opinions. That definitely provides really interesting context and helps me to understand why other people would probably love this new movie a lot more than me. Because for me, the reason why I didn't love it is because it felt like it was missing critical elements from the franchise. You know, the first movie is one of my favorite horror movies of the 80s of all time. When you're watching it with the context of having read these books that he mentioned, yeah, I get it. I totally get it. Nope is my favorite Peel film. Seeing it in IMAX with laser was a real treat, especially in the final act. That's really surprising to me. I don't think I've talked to anybody who Get Out is not their favorite Jordan Peele film. I feel like that's just such a wide consensus. So that actually probably is an unpopular opinion. Also, I saw it in a Dolby theater, which was fantastic. Obviously the sound design was crazy. It's a bit of a bigger screen and it still didn't do it for me. I wish that I could get into the club. I want to love the movie. So many people did, but alas. Although I highly enjoyed Scream 5 and it's one of my favorites in the franchise, the reveal of the killers and the motives weren't all that great for me, but who knows, maybe it'll grow on me. I actually completely agree, but I think that Scream 5 will kind of flip flop between my third and fourth favorite of the franchise. I don't think I would ever consider it to be one of my favorites. So that is kind of a hot take. Okay, here we go. Hot takes from Spooky Sapphic. The Wednesday show was so bad. <laughs> Like legit Riverdale level acting and storylines. Most of the actors seem dope, but something about the writing made their acting seem really bad. Also, I could not for the life of me ship Wednesday with anybody other than Enid. I'm, that's what I'm talking about. It seemed like Tyler was 10 years older than her and the other guy was just kind of shitty. <laughs> I have actually heard this from other people that Wednesday feels like Riverdale to them. I do have to push back on the acting thing because I've said it before and I'll say it fucking again. Jenna Ortega has redefined subtle acting, like the smallest little twitch of a little 
muscle in her face and I can read that her emotion has changed. That's who, who's doing it like that? And I love the production design, the costume design, just everything. I mean, it's a great looking show. You're not wrong that she should have ended up with Enid. In fact, on Twitter, some of the writers have come forward and they're like, you know, we're not ruling that out. And to that I say, sometimes fan service is okay. Sometimes it's okay, trust me. I feel like Tyler probably seemed 10 years older than her because Jenna Ortega is just tiny. She is a teeny tiny little woman, like five feet tall, okay? So anybody really next to her is gonna look a lot bigger than they really are. I'm probably taller than the actor that played Tyler, just to give you a little perspective. But yeah, anyway, I, I shouldn't ramble about Wednesday for too long here. The next opinion, also very much unpopular. You really understood the assignment, well done. I also thought that Barbarian was only mediocre, though that could be related to my terrible theater experience. I'll tell you what, a bad theater experience can really make or break a movie, honestly, because Jurassic World Dominion is pretty bad, but also for the entire first half of the movie, there were these awful teenagers in my screening. Teenagers are honestly deplorable, like they're the bane of my existence. But anyway, yeah, I mean, if you have a terrible theater experience, you're not as immersed, you're not probably paying attention as well as you should be. And so, yeah, you don't pick up on a bunch of stuff that you probably should. So yeah, I would probably attribute it part to that, but I also had friends that didn't enjoy Barbarian. Like they liked it. They gave it a decent enough score, but different strokes. And finally, Scream 5 was the most fun for me to see in theaters this year and might be my favorite horror of 2022. I don't think I've really seen anybody list the new Scream in their top 10. It didn't even make my top 10, which is surprising because I really loved it. But also this could be like a recency bias thing. That movie came out almost a year ago now in January. So I don't know. I'm still excited to rewatch it. I did go see it twice in theaters. So I loved it a fair amount, but still didn't make my top 10. Oh, hey, it's Night Owl, I got my idea from them to make this video. All right, number one, the creature design ruined Barbarian? I went from that's a cool unique movie to I've seen this movie a few times before. Oh no. No, you know, I get it. And this is a, a spoiler for the second act of Barbarian. So just skip ahead a few seconds. Not everyone likes incest horror. I get that, I really do. That was actually why some of my friends didn't like the movie. They're like, no, that just isn't really for me. And typically that kind of horror is not for me either. So I don't know, this one just did it differently. And I was like, yes. You also loved Halloween Ends. It's the creepiest one of the trilogy, including the original. But that's probably because I'm not a Halloween fan. I'm a Scream fan. So I understand why fans were disappointed given the nature of Michael Myers. If the plot of the Halloween Ends was applied to Scream, it could work. Yeah, someone who becomes the second or third ghost face mid-movie. Oh, not bad, not too shabby. All right, final one. Tara's opening in Scream 5 is better than Casey's opening in Scream 1. Maybe Drew acting was great at the time, but it feels outdated and takes me out of the scene sometimes. It's still iconic and synonymous with Scream though. Honestly, yeah, the opening of Scream 5 almost feels a bit darker. And that's saying something because we all know what happens to Casey Becker. But yeah, I don't know if it's Jenna Ortega. I feel like the cinematography and the lighting of it was quite a bit more ominous in the newest installment. So perhaps that's why, I don't know. I'll let you know how I feel about it again on my rewatch of the franchise. I do ba do ba do a do, 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 do. Got more love for Halloween ends. I'm just not gonna include every single one of those, you know? Okay, here we go. I know it gets a lot of hate, but I thoroughly enjoyed the new Texas Chainsaw reboot. It was a dumb fun ride and I was there for every second of it. I do think the message was muddled, but I did enjoy the action of the school shooting premise and that side character mechanic who was a Republican. <laughs> I found it to be very relatable, even though I'm as left wing as they come. Easily one of my favorites of the year. Okay, hot takes. Yeah, they did make the gun toting man in this movie quite relatable. For whatever reason, he kind of played the straight man in the movie. I, I don't know why. That all got quite a bit messy. So you do have some good critiques. I agree. I think I gave that movie two stars because like it's awful, but I was entertained and I would rewatch it. Alrighty, alrighty. We got one from Cash. Okay, the first one's about Halloween ends. I think I'm gonna skip over those for now. His second one though, Art the Clown is probably my favorite silent horror villain. I think he's way scarier than Michael, Jason, or Leatherface simply because he doesn't wear a mask. Art's facial expressions and body language are way more chilling to me than a tall masked man with a big weapon. I 
Agree. Agreed. We can agree to agree on this one because holy sh- Art the Clown, like he is such a bad vibe. When I was re-watching the first Terrifier, I had kind of forgotten how terrible those movies make me feel, but in a good way. Art the Clown is disgusting. He's just vile. He makes you so uncomfortable just with a stare. And also he's hilarious. He's so funny. He's a physical comedian. So it's this really crazy yo-yo of emotions where you're having a great time, but you also want to jump out of your own skin. And frankly, Michael, Jason, Leatherface, they do not do it for me the way that art does. So I agree. All right, last one from Cash. I'm not sure if this counts, but in my opinion, the scariest horror icon is Vecna from Stranger Things. Not only because of his design and how he kills people, but because his nihilistic, misanthropic philosophy makes me understand where he's coming from. Don't get me wrong, I'm not rooting for Vecna at all, and I want Eleven to kill him once and for all, but the fact that his motivations are somewhat realistic and comparable to real-life genocidal psychopaths makes Vecna way more more terrifying in my opinion. No, I get that because Samuel L. Jackson's character from The Kingsman, I'm kind of with him. I think that makes the best villain when like you don't agree with what they're doing, but you understand their motive perfectly well. Sam Jackson's character in The Kingsman, he's like trying to get rid of global warming, which is a noble thing. However, he intends to do that by basically killing the entire population. So not great, but yeah, Vecna is a, is a similar kind of guy. When you can understand villain it makes them more scary because you're like, why am I empathizing with this? It's just so effective because there's so much more nuance. It's it's complicated. It makes you feel conflicted. Yes, good, uh, good um, opinions. Okay, I love to hear more about, you know, movies that you guys love despite everyone else hating them. Don't believe in the message and platforming of dash cam, but the second and third acts were very entertaining and fun for me. Also liked The Reef Stocked, even though everyone hated it. I'll be honest, I did not watch that one. I really enjoyed Emma, even though it may not have been original. And that was really my only gripe with that movie because I feel like if I hadn't seen about a billion other movies just like it, it, it's probably a good movie. It's just quite derivative, isn't it? Terrifier 2 is one of the greatest horror films of all time. You know what? I don't know about that, but it will definitely make history. Oh, we have another person saying that Jenna Ortega's acting in the opening scene of Scream 5 was better than Drew Barrymore's acting in the opening of the original Scream. Drew was just given a better script. Not shading Drew, I love her too. We love that. We love the clarification. Okay, Sam Carpenter is by all means a more interesting and better final girl than Sydney Prescott. Her backstory is instantly more catching and her sisterly bond is more emotionally driving. Not to mention she's badass the way she fucks Richie up. I don't no, I mean like the dead mom thing at this point it's kind of played out, but it's it's hard for me to suspend my disbelief with Billy having a daughter. I'm, that was just, it, it's, it's a bit of a reach. But if you find that more interesting, power to ya. If you don't like Halloween ends, then produce your own finale. Okay, I, I said leave unpopular opinions. I didn't say be annoying. Why can't I expect a good finale? So many people didn't like it. Like, that's just a dumb thing to say. Oh, you didn't like something? Yeah, I'd like to see you make something better. Give me the fucking budget, babes. Even the best of movies deserve criticisms. Like, come on. Shudder has the best horror film of the year. You know what? That's right. That's damn right, because the best film of the year was Watcher, and that is streaming on Shudder. Halloween Ends delivered more than Scream did, even if it had a few problems. Uh, a few problems? Ugh. Gosh, I can't. I have to move away from Halloween Ends. I just do. From Rob, Halloween Kills is one of the best in the Halloween franchise. Strange plot points? Who cares? <laughs> Too many returning characters from the 1978 original film? I say give me more of them. I just like watching Michael Myers on a rampage. I completely agree, and I know that you know that this is a safe space because I rated that at number one out of the big three franchises. It's the most rewatchable. It has the best Halloween spirit. Um, I agree. I would love to have even more of the legacy characters characters. It helped to build the world of Haddonfield so much more for me and like really brought in the scope of what Michael Myers has done to this town. I love world building. I'm a slut for it. Chucky was the best show of the year. That's a, that's a bold take when Wednesday and Little Demon fully exist, you know? Smile is the best horror movie of the year. There, I said it. <laughs> I'm sure that a lot of people actually feel that way. That movie did numbers in the box office and I think that it definitely has like the best mass appeal, probably 
of almost any horror movie that was released this year. Because for one, it's original. It's not tied to any other property, so anybody could just go see it willy-nilly, if you will. It's also copying a lot of other better horror movies, so I'm sure that the general audiences wouldn't really know about that, and they'd just be like, wow, these are great concepts. <laughs> and it has a lot of jump scares, which I think caters to a much broader audience than just the horror community. So I get it. I feel like a lot of people are gonna feel that way. Oh, Scream 5 makes Scream 3 look like a masterpiece. <laughs> I feel like there were a lot of people that didn't like the new Scream movie because when it first came out and all the fans went to see it, we're all like, oh my God, this is so good. It's the best thing ever. But then more people saw it and I, I feel like people do agree because a lot of people don't like the newer vibe. Oh my gosh, Michael Myers left a comment. I'm so honored. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 is the best in the franchise, in my opinion. I just have so much fun with it. If it's your favorite, that's different to it being the best movie. You know, there's no clarification here, but I'm just gonna assume. That's fine, babes. Also, Terrifier 2, everybody's loving that, so I don't think that's unpopular. However, your third one, Halloween Ends, is my favorite Halloween movie and also one of my favorite movies of all time. That is a crazy claim. We love what we love, though. What are you gonna do? I mean, Babylon just came out and I am obsessed with it, despite a lot of people not liking it. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna lie? No, I think it's a cinematic masterpiece. I think it's an epic. A Friday the 13th prequel series sounds like an awful idea. I don't need to know what Jason was like as a child. I feel like I know all I need to know about that. I agree and disagree with that because I want a prequel series mostly because I want more of Pamela. I have a sneaking, stinking feeling that they're gonna kind of give her the pearl treatment. And I'll be honest, I really wanna see that. However, I do agree that I don't really need to know much more about Jason. Sure, it might be fun to have some of his story filled in, but I don't really know how much they can offer us. Orphan First Kill is the biggest dip in quality for a horror sequel I've seen in years. Julia Stiles' wooden acting, clunky dialogue, convoluted story, atrocious soft focus lighting, and PlayStation 2 level visual effects are completely baffled me. I couldn't even read that right. I was so, that was a lot. But I have to give it credit, the film is extremely memorable, especially the twist in the second act. I'm glad you, you chopped it off with that. Because I didn't find her acting to be wooden at all. I found her to be very much a hard ass. She just got straight to the point, you know? That is definitely a hot take, because a lot of Orphan fans really love that sequel, myself included. Somebody started this comment with K Ready, and so immediately I'm intrigued. Studio 666 is a fucking masterpiece. I hear you there. I couldn't give it a good score just in good faith, but I loved it. I thoroughly enjoyed Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mindy is the cringiest new character in Scream. Ugh. Okay, you knew that I wouldn't be happy about that one. Fresh is one of the best movies of the year. I agree. It made number 10 in my top 10 of the year. And Bodies, Bodies, Bodies and Nope were huge disappointments. I agree and I agree. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies wasn't as big of a disappointment because I wasn't quite as hyped for it, but I was still really looking forward to it, especially with that cast. But I just, the, the satire was, was not very good. Not sure how unpopular this is, but original horror is better than franchise horror. Watcher over Halloween kills, you know I agree there. For me, it just depends, but I will say that with viewing experience and such like that, I think that I typically will always have a better reaction to good original horror than good franchise horror. Though Halloween Kills was a huge, really fun surprise, but again, you know, that's loaded with so much other stuff and nostalgia and whatever. So I don't know. For me, that one, I think just really depends. I don't know if I could say whether I agree or disagree with that. <gasps> I thought Jenna's dance in Wednesday was cringe, to be honest. You know what? Again, one man's cringe is another man's wide-eyed beautiful treasure. What the fuck? Oh, how dare you? You know what? The girls that get it, get it, and the ones who don't, don't. I have never formed a bond with Sydney. I don't feel like her character has much personality and was never my favorite character in any of the movies, so I'm glad the franchise isn't focusing on her anymore. Look, I like Sydney for what she does, not necessarily for who she she is because I do not relate to that woman. I just typically don't identify with like the goody goody nice girl because <laughs> it's not me. Oh, my nose is so itchy. It's gonna be all red. But for what she does, I think that she'll probably always be in at least like my top 15 final girls of all time. They Slash Them was a decent movie. Oh boy. <laughs> We're gonna have some upset gays in the comments, boys. Also, I'm skipping by quite a few of the comments where people are just like, actually, this movie that everyone loves sucked. Because those just aren't as fun, you know? I prefer to read the ones where everybody hated a movie and then this one weirdo really liked it. Those are the stories that I uplift. Oh gosh, okay, we got a big one here. 
so I'm just gonna pluck a few out of this big comment. Ooh, a subscriber from Columbia, cool. Sam Carpenter was a terrible lead character. I think her acting is bad most of the time. I, I have to agree, I don't think it's great. Smile is overrated. Yeah, I'm not gonna get into this because I, I pretty much agree with all that. Terrifier 2 was overhyped. Yes, it was gory, but not the traumatic movie people were saying, and it has a lot of filler, and that makes the movie not rewatchable. I don't like the sword and the Sienna mythology either. I don't know, for me, that's probably definitely the goriest thing that I have personally ever seen. I've never really started to feel queasy during a movie before. So I don't know if that's what you mean by traumatic, but if you're saying you don't get why people were like fainting and throwing up, I actually do get that. I could see why that would happen to weaker stomached people, but I didn't really like all the mythology either. That felt weirdly out of place because the first Terrifier was so grounded and it's fun, don't get me wrong. And I, I adore that final girl. Like she's super cute. I follow her on Twitter now. She's very, very interactive with her fans, but I wasn't like blown away like everybody else. I'm so happy for the people that love it. It's one of those movies where I just know that it's not for me, but for the niche that it's made for, I see how it's a perfect film, I do. And I'm so happy you guys have that. Okay, this last one, definitely. I hope more people realize this. I'm tired of the trope of using a woman with a deformed body as a monster. It's fun one or two times. Barbarian and Smile did it this year, Wreck did it years before, and there are more that I can't remember now, but it's becoming boring and unoriginal. I can agree with that, but I think especially with a movie like Barbarian, they actually kind of flip that on its head and she becomes an empathetic character. But I do agree because, oh, big ugly woman, scary. That's not the best look. That also really, really makes me wonder what kind of barbarian copycats we'll see in the future and to what degree it will be copied. Because you know that a movie that made that much hullabaloo is gonna start some trends. It just will. I've even tried to brainstorm ways that I could make a really distinct three act flip kind of structure the way that they did. So now that has me thinking. Anyway, moving on. Someone said horror is scary. I have never heard that one before. You better watch out in this comment section. Texas Chainsaw 2022 is actually better than Scream 5. Live your truth. Nope is not as deep and good as many say it is. Now, you know that I partially agree with this because I'm obviously not on the Nope bandwagon. I do not have much love for that movie. However, I do think that it is extremely deep. There are, there are so many layers to unpack. There, there's just, there, That's the problem though. There's too much to unpack from Nope and not enough focus. Like there's there's too much going on and, and not enough of a through line. I particularly enjoyed what it had to say about the exploitative nature of Hollywood. I found that really interesting. Focusing on the characters who are most often exploited and most often overlooked. I found that to be really interesting, but I think that along with Steven Yoon's backstory should have been its own movie. I've said this a thousand times, so I don't need to keep going on about that, but we'll have to agree to disagree that I do think the movie is quite deep, but also just has too maybe too much depth. I don't know. I think we finally got one for X here. X is a meh movie. What's the big deal about it? I don't get it. However, Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake was a much better slasher and is in my top 10 horror movies of 2022. You know, I actually had a friend, uh, Tiago, I, he left a comment on this too. He actually put the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre in his top 10 as well. So I have seen that from people, but I definitely still think that's an unpopular opinion. Also hard agree on X. I gave that movie three out of five stars. It needed so much more substance underneath all that fancy colors and stuff, but a lot of people get sucked in by style and I really don't blame them for that because I would even say that Babylon, the movie that I saw yesterday, I was completely smitten by the style and th I still think that there was quite a lot of substance and the movie had a lot to say under that, but you bet your ass that's what sucked me in the most. So I really don't blame people when they love the style of something so much that they can overlook a lack of substance or a lack of a good story, sorry. I really don't blame them for that, but with this one, I unfortunately also just don't really get it. I will leave in this positive comment about Nope because I appreciate this about it too. Nope was a work of art and had exceptional tension. The film wasn't afraid to be audacious and different, so therefore I appreciate it very much. Well said, well put, and I agree. I can still appreciate it for all the brilliant stuff that it did. And I'm gonna end with this final comment because I don't think that it's unpopular at all, but it made me giggle. Halloween Ends is the worst movie of the year, it makes no sense, and Michael getting manhandled is worse than Busta's dumb kick on Michael. Corey who was bullied by a scrawny high school marching band kid ends up throwing down Michael Myers? Guarantee Busta would never get bullied by a marching band nerd. I mean, yeah, that's that's a, <laughs> that's a good one. Now, trust me, there are a lot of other comments in here that say Scream 5 sucked, Barbarian sucked, no, bodies, 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 that, you know, they all sucked. And I get it, but you know, there wasn't much else to them and that's not typically what I like to focus on, as I mentioned. But those were all there and 
just know if you feel the same way, you're not alone. Many of us were very taken aback by Barbarian, but a lot of people were not so impressed, and that's okay. Say it with me one more time, ladies and gents. Uh, different strokes for different folks. That's the beauty of our little world. I'm glad that no claws came out in the comment section. It seems like people were, for the most part, quite respectful with one another. And thank you all so much for sharing and making this video possible. Thank you to Night Owl 30 for the recommendation. I'm so glad that I caught that comment of yours. And I also do hope that I do this every year. This is a really fun little tradition we can start. It's kind of sad. This will forever be the last video of 2022. It's been quite a year. I gained 10,000 new subscribers just this year. And this was my third year doing YouTube. So it's kind of been just an exponential bit of growth that I've had, especially over the last few months. So thank you so much to everybody that's here for allowing me to work for myself, live in the dream. If you've been around on this channel, you know that I don't work for other people very well. So thank you. Thank you for this sanctuary. <laughs> However, this video did come about because of a comment and I get suggestions from my patrons all the time. So if you'd like to join that community, then you're more than welcome to. That'll be linked down below. And a huge thank you, of course, to all of my patrons for making this possible. I don't know why I did it on this side. The whole time I've been pointing out things on this side. Anyway, thank you guys. <laughs> you get four to six bonus content videos over there every single month, including all of my first reactions to new horror movies. Sometimes I bring my dad over there. It's a good time. We have a ball. If that's not for you, then all the rest of my social media is linked down below. I hope that you have a very safe and fun and happy and love-filled New Year's. Stay safe out there. Drink water, a glass of water between every drink. Trust me. You'll feel so much better in the morning. But other than that, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I catch you in the new year. Bye!